Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himbar, and today I am chatting with a special guest. I think you're here on the screen. It mirrors it. So this uh, is Tasky. Hi, yeah. I'm Tasky from Les, Les, Les Rêveries de Tasky. And so Tasky is the person I've actually buddy read the most books with, I think, ever probably. So, um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so they had to chat. We haven't had the opportunity before. I just, I mean, that's mostly my fault probably, but so, and um, you do, them too. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all busy here, right? So, yeah. um, you, you do your videos in French, right? Yep. And, uh, yeah, tried some, uh, some English, but they aren't out now yet. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, I'm looking forward to those if you do put them out. Um, and I think, never really, does that translate to like musings or so? Or... I, I had a, a bug didn't hear. Um, does reverie like translate into like musings probably in English? Uh, I think it might, yeah, dreamings, musings, yeah, something like that, like a, a walk and dream kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could, you could say reverie in English, but, uh, yeah. I don't think it would fit the connotations as well as musings or something. So anyways, so um, there may be some lag like on some video that there's a little bit of a connectivity issue, but the audio is fine. So just bear with us for those watching. But we just wanted to chat about mostly just books and mostly the books that we've read together and just probably some literature in general, maybe. And maybe some other stuff. But so I, like I said, so I've read more with Tasky than anyone else because I've read a couple with Owen from Owen Edwards book reviews. And then I've read almost as much as I've read with Tasky with my brother, uh, but not quite. <laughs> um, and so we started with Thieves World, which I think was in September, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. And then we went into... Oath of Swords, which is the first War God novel in November. And then since then, we've done three Forgotten Realms novels, um, the Avatar books. So um, they're all fantasy, <laughs> um, if that wasn't obvious or if you don't know about those books. Actually, interestingly enough, they're, none of them are really all that popular. Uh, that's yeah. not like we're reading any new and big like names or even any really classics, I guess. I wouldn't call any of those big classics, at least. I mean, David Ver David Weber is big, but not in fancy. Yeah, he's definitely known more for his uh, space opera. So. And, uh, you know, I haven't read any of his space opera. <laughs> so Same. I, I should. Um, I've been meaning to at some point. But yeah, I've heard it's great. Yeah, I, I, heard his, I hear his naval battles, um, or space naval battles, whatever you want to call those, or are some of the best because he was in the Navy or something like that. So, or was maybe just knows a lot of Naval history. I'm not really sure, but so, but uh, as far as Thieves World goes, I believe, I can't remember when, that's like a 1970s or like oh, book, I think. I don't know if it's that old, but yeah, it's pretty old. I have yeah. it there, so it might be a, uh... I'd be on it, but yeah, it's uh, it's old. Yeah, it's definitely not 1979, new. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that sounds right. I guess late 70s. So um, and it was the first in the Thieves World world uh, series, and um, I think that that's edited by Robert Asprin. I know his name's Asprin. Yep. yep. Okay. So, and then it's a anthology of a bunch of stories from different authors, uh, it's a shared world. That was the idea, was to make this world together that make these, I think the authors like created their own characters and then yeah, they, they, stories about them. they wanted to create a world with each author having one character, but having the opportunity to use the other's uh, characters. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting idea. I'm sure it's been done a, a several times, but I mean, this is the first time I've ever experienced anything like it. So, and honestly, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Actually, it was it was 
to go from like one like one story having a character and then the next story having that same character generally not as like the main character but you see that character again and it's just like the differences in how they act or at least how they're written yeah was interesting i mean it was i think it was a what do you call it like an interesting test of sorts at least so yeah and that's one of the things that made me want uh, want to read the book to see the differences between the different uh, point of views and uh, that's what i'm looking for for the next books yeah yeah um you know i think for some reason it's not always the same authors um like i know some issues some authors just aren't in there i mean some probably are only in like issues once if i were to guess like different anthologies um and i know they rebooted it in the in the aughts the early 2000s and that probably had mostly different authors rather than the old set since i'm sure that was about the time where a lot of those classic like fantasy authors were passing like they're just old at that point um sorry to say and so i mean um because i think uh because i think i believe aspen is no longer with us and i can't remember his wife lynn abby is she still alive i'm not even sure i don't know i mean uh, yeah it's easy to check but uh, yeah <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm always about the, I don't know, let me look right now. But uh, <laughs> so, um, I, I really liked actually speaking of Lynn Abbey though, I'm a, I'm a fan of Lynn Abbey. I haven't read much of hers, um, but she she was the one spearheading the, the man, the Thieves World stuff when it was rebooted. Um, I, yeah, I guess I believe Aspen, Aspirin wasn't, wasn't alive anymore. And so, and I believe they were actually married for a little while there, though. I think they ended up getting a divorce. Yeah, so. I don't know. I, yeah, I think they were uh, together when they first created Thieves World. But I don't know what happened next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting if you... I don't know if, if your copy had it and if it did, if you read it. There's like a little essay or like, like yeah. creating of Thieves World at the end. And it mentioned how Abby wasn't a published author when they like got the idea and started writing thieves world but by the time thieves world had come out she was a published author she had i don't remember what the name of the series was but it had started coming out um and, you know she got a contract to have it published and so i thought that was interesting that i mean like I, one way or the other she was going to be published right either thieves world was going to be her first thing or whatever those books were i can't remember the name of um, yeah and uh i haven't read anything by her except for uh, thieves world but if I remember correctly, her story was one of my favorites. I was kind of um, surprised by hers and another, uh, I think I think it's Christine Dewis, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, who hadn't published anything and uh, wrote one of my favorite uh, stories in this book. Yeah, it was a, there was one other author, I think, that was... And I think she's still relatively unknown. I mean, it was kind of hard to yeah. find information about her. Not even sure if she published anything after that. Yeah, because I, I remember I was reading, I was reading that essay at the end, and I was like looking up the authors simultaneously, so I'd have an idea who they were, and I was like, I can't find anything on this lady. <laughs> so. But which, yeah, I think. Abby really, I think, had my favorite story. I think maybe my least favorite, if I should mention it, was probably Marion, Marion Zimmer Bradley's. Um, it was just, um, I don't know. It was just, just kind of weird. Which one was it? Kind so of it was one of the later yeah. ones. Um, here, let me look at my notes real quick so I don't get this wrong. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so that was the secret of the blue star. So it, it was funny because it's my least favorite because it made me uncomfortable. Now, yeah. the main character there, who I believe his name is Lathand, um, it's the wizard guy with the pentacle on his forehead. Um, oh, the yeah. plot twist to that person's like, like secrets, essentially, I guess you could say, that was interesting. I actually found that 
rather interesting because the idea is um, Lathan's the main character in the story, right? And uh, the point is, is that like if you can figure out like this secret or something, you'd have like power over him or whatever. I don't I don't remember exactly, but the, the yeah. So I mean, I liked the premise of it. There was some I can't. There was just something that like. I don't know. It was it was something sexual, if I'm remembering that, like disturbed me. That yeah. had to do with like this like teenage girl, and I was just like, yeah, no, I don't really like no. care about this. Um, so, but which is weird because if that wasn't in there, it probably would have been one of my favorites. Because like I said, the the, the Lothand, like plot points was probably the biggest surprise of the whole series. Besides, um, one thumb is that his name? One year. I remember they, one being called that but uh, he's the he's the guy that uh runs the vulgar unicorn yeah and he has Isn't... a story that's about him and that was really disturbing too but in yeah different I, ways <laughs> if that's the one i'm thinking of yeah and it was probably my favorite uh, story his yeah that one is a and that it was, one was a, a dark a wild yeah. ride yeah it was very dark I was it wasn't I wasn't expecting it, you know, because I mean that kind of had to go with um, the character's different like different point of views or like how you view the character from different point of views of different authors. That it's just like I was not expecting that at all, <laughs> like from that character. I mean, like, and it fit. I mean, it worked, right? And I was just like, but yeah, man, it like was it, it was surprising, shocking, really. So I've heard it was uh, it was grim dark, but wasn't expecting that kind of uh, dark. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Especially since the first few stories were a little bit more mellow, and you're just like, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is kind of dark. So. I think it's uh, when we were reading it, it was like uh, Shadow Spawn. I think that that's the one where I was like, oh wow, that that turns out very grim dark. Yeah, which is interesting because this is before grim dark is technically a thing. Yeah, right. And, but it does. It is rather dark. Um, well, then you have other authors who are just, that's not really their style. I mean, Sanctuary itself, which is the setting, is rather a bleak place. But, I mean, some take it kind of in a more lighthearted way, and others take it in a more dreary way. So yeah, I, I think the, the first story, I think, is very, like, both hopeful and pretty depressing. With the the girl and the and the wizard, yeah, yeah, man, that that first story was interesting too. That was, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of interesting stories here. It's it reminds me actually talking about it now that I should go and read the second book um, because I've had it for a while and I just haven't gotten back to it yet. So, um, but I do want to read it. So yes, yeah, same. I think. I think part of the problem for me at least is anthologies is something I typically go through slower because they're just short stories. And so it's like, I can get gripped by this short story, but I might not be gripped by the next one. You know, and it's like, it's not the same story, you know? And so it's just yeah. like, okay, the arc is finished. Now I have to get back into it, you know? And well, they're short, so that makes it easier. It's not like it's a compilation of novels. I mean, like, that'd make it a lot harder, of course. Um, That's but, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah right so but i'm i'm looking forward to um reading more mostly so i can get like more more authors like i want to read more of abby but also like i'm pretty sure cj cherry it can, i think like yes. contributes to some of the later stuff um i know there's, in the reboot jeff grubb does as well and i want to read his stuff too yeah there's uh zelazny also i think in the in book two Oh, does he? Oh man! Uh, I think the the story in uh, <laughs> in the essay was that he didn't manage to send his story uh, for the first book, so he but he did for the second. Oh man! Well, that's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't read any of the Lazmi at the time. I had read. I haven't this. yet. But, uh, so. Um, I've only read one. Oh yeah, I can't. You didn't end up reading uh, Nine Princes. No, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I had to, to drop good. off. <laughs> Understandable. But yeah, no. that's that's one series I'm looking forward to read uh, in uh, in the future. Yeah, definitely one to continue, and definitely one to 
I mean, even if I wanted to take it like slower, you know, like maybe not sit and read it from cover to cover, but like sit and read a story, you know, every once in a while. And then who knows how long, but it'll, you know, I'll finish it eventually. <laughs> so, um, because there was hardly any connection between the stories either. I, there probably yeah. was a little bit if I'm, but I'm having a hard time remembering. I think there was some connection between uh, some characters. I really forgot all the name, but the the um, uh, the woman who can uh, I forgot the name divine divine magic like um, oh yeah uh, how, yeah forgot how that's called but her and the guy from the story when where they go into some kind of dimension. Uh, oh, yeah. I think they were pretty linked in both their stories, like they talked about the other one. So it was interesting to see uh, from their point of view how they see, how they saw the other character. And I think the wizard one in the in, Mar in uh, Bradley's uh, story, the wizard, was talked about a lot in the other stories. Mm -hmm. I think the main, they mentioned it several times, but we never saw it before this story. Yeah. Yeah, that look, some of the characters do pop up more than the others. Um, like, I'm not sure that... I believe it's the first story when it's the girl that's a scribe, or is that the second story? Um, I think that's the first. The one yeah. who's, yeah, who's uh, some kind of a slave and then yeah. meets the, the wizard. Uh, the wizard yeah, one. I... I can't remember I if she ever shows back up. No. I don't think. See, um, with how the the story ended, I don't think she she showed back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's that's another thing. It's like, is this in like chronological order? Is it? Is there like? I mean, yeah. the idea is that there's something to like make the person start writing it, right? That there's a new governor in town, you know, and so I mean that's what they they start with, but. In most stories, it wasn't like a big plot point. It's just like yeah. kind of the setting, I suppose. I think the the books, uh, the problem of the book, uh, the the main one is that it's a first book, so a lot of introduction. It's short, and it's several short stories that are all mainly introduction. So the the world itself is not very developed. There's no global plot. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not very yeah. developed yet. So I'm looking also forward to, to uh, reading the next books, you know, to have a more uh, fleshed out world and characters. Yeah, I think I think it'll be interesting. And you know, this the whole series is not completely these anthologies. There's actually later, I'm pretty sure Lynn Abbey wrote some novels. Yeah, um, there's Seth some novels. World. And then uh, whoever made the Shadow Spawn character, I believe, had a trilogy about Shadow Spawn specifically. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure, but so definitely an interesting, definitely like a, I would say almost like a modern, or maybe not modern is not the right word, but like a like a count it fit. I would say a sword and sorcery, but it doesn't really read a lot like the a lot of the classical sword and sorcery like Conan. Or like Fawfern and the Grey Master. I don't know if you've read any of that, but it doesn't really read like that. I mean, it kind of does because I mean, it is still sword and sorcery, but it seems in some ways like the in between, you know, um, kind of yeah. like how he mentioned, kind of grim dark ish. So um, it seems like it's kind of like a pivot point or along like that, like late seventies, early eighties, where I feel like a lot more fantasy starts to become more recognizable as what the genre is today. To what most readers would probably be familiar with. Yeah, I think the this book is between uh, grim dark, uh, sword and sorcery, and basic heroic fantasy. And depending on the on the author, it will uh, lean on one of these uh, subgenres. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good distinguisher there. That depending on the author, so um, which makes it makes it pretty fun, honestly. So yeah. I'm looking forward to getting more of those. And then um, uh, maybe we can transition here to, uh, we read Oath of Swords, which is kind of in the same boat. Um, I can't remember when that one came out either, 
but it's kind of like uh, a like a late sword and sorcery feel classic fantasy feel yeah um to it. it it comes off very much like dungeon and dragons actually that that's it it fell into that like same vein essentially i don't think he was trying to do that um i i think but, maybe like the same inspirations because mm -hmm. the the novel really felt like D and D slash Tolkien. Yeah. So right. yeah, but I don't think he was doing uh, that on purpose. Right. Yeah. So I mean, which is a, I mean, knowing that like Dungeons and Dragons, for example, is it kind of, is heavily inspired by a lot of like classical sort of sorcery, but also heavily inspired by things like Tolkien, and so it's just like you kind of have similar things going on here, and so it just kind of feels like. Dungeon Dragons, <laughs> and I mean, yeah. so, um, which was I really mean, nice at the time, I thought, so. I mean, there were halflings, elves, dwarves, so. Yeah, although I think the halflings had, like, horns, didn't they? Yeah, they had horns, horns, but they were short, <laughs> just, uh, just yeah. had horns. Like, they mixed yeah, halflings and tieflings. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and then, of course, though, the, the big difference is the Hradani, I guess yeah, the Hradani. Is really hard to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, that H R Hradani. Not a, not a sound in English or French, really. Um, yeah. So, um, that's the fantasy word for you. Um, but uh, they're like, I mean, I mean, their ears are kind of elf-like, but they're bigger. They're fox-like. That's the word they use. Yeah, they're right? they're fox. Yeah. So. Um, but they're big guys generally, or they're prone. Well, they're considered savages, right? Yeah, I think there's, if I remember correctly, there's the um, horse stealer who are like very big and strong and yeah. very barbaric, and then there's the um, blood bloody swords. I I forgot the name of the other uh, who's um uh ah uh, I'm forgot I'm forgetting everything. Um, <laughs> Uh, how yeah, how he it's, um, yeah. it is his bloody friends something, but, yeah and then so it's Basel and uh, I think it's the bloody swords yeah it's bloody something <laughs> there are other tribes they mentioned but you never see anyone from yeah them. but it felt like the there were the main two like the strong and barbaric one and then the less um, maybe weaker like in physical form but more civilized and the uh, uh, yeah. well-versed in the use of weapons and uh, swords and everything <laughs> which i think was an interesting um like talking point really there is that the more civilized ones were more bad <laughs> in a sense you know what i mean like they were the i mean at least the rulers were rather evil i mean if you just want to say it that way um and uh which i thought was interesting so yeah. <laughs> you know like we're we're seeing this because our main character is essentially a political hostage. Um, he he has to live with the bloody swords or whatever they are, the bloody the bloody ones. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, but he is a horse stealer, and and yeah, and so it's it's obvious he's a horse stealer, right? Because he's bigger compared to the others. Um, but he is like. I mean, the big thing about the Haradani, besides their fox-like ears, is that they, they're essentially, they go berserk, right? They, yeah. they, they, they have rage. this rage. Yeah, they're barbarians yeah. from Dungeons and Dragons, Basically, essentially. Yeah. So, um, and so the, the big point is, like, controlling that rage, like, not being a slave to the rage, and rather making yeah. the rage, like, something you can control and utilize, like a, like a, bo like a good thing rather than a negative, right? So yeah, use uh, use the rage and not letting it use you. I think that was uh, yeah, one of the big biggest talk uh, throughout the book, especially with uh, with the whole Basel and like quest for identity thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's almost like a coming of age, but it's he's an adult. Um, so I mean, it's it's not as juvenile in that sense. You know, he he's already he's already a good guy essentially. Um, but he's just trying to figure out where he belongs. Um, and so, you know, because he doesn't want to live out his life as a political hostage. <laughs> and uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's the title of the series that kind of like, 
there was something I felt like that just spoiled the series kind of because there's something that says like you know mentions like paladins and it's just like yeah the 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 phrase at the end I don't know if you can see I think that's the thing that spoiled everything whom the gods would recruit to their first tick off yeah and it's like that doesn't I mean it, I guess it starts kind of maybe slightly earlyish but it doesn't really like come to fruition until like almost the very end of the book yeah it's <laughs> uh, it's pretty late yeah so i thought that was kind of weird that's probably not um weber's fault that's probably the publisher just bungling up blurbs yeah. good you're a big fan of cats huh yeah i have three cats <laughs> okay i i see like all your pictures like i've seen online are of cats so it's yeah just... most of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> I assume are those pictures of your cats or? Yeah, the the nice. the one on my uh, YouTube channel that is a picture of my cats. Yeah. Okay, nice. I like cats too, but I don't have any not right now at least. So, <clears throat> but uh, what was it? So, so oath of swords. <laughs> other thoughts? Well, I mean, I I really enjoyed oath of swords. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think and... it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really slow paced. Um, yeah, it's it's not fast like at all, which isn't to say it's not exciting. Um, the combat is really well done. The atmosphere yeah, the... is exceptional. I thought. I and um, for uh, coming back with what you said just before with the uh, the raid in Basel, um, and kind of the world and how it's written really made me think of. Uh, of the Witcher, uh, hmm. in the whole like the the beast who can't really control himself, who's stronger than everyone else, who's seen as a brute, but who's like deeply very kind and has a a sense of honor, and who's trying just to find his place. I really f thought that there were a lot of of um, uh, similarities between the two uh, the two uh, series. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm not really all that familiar with Witcher, like at all. I haven't played the games, read the books, watched the show. <laughs> I mean, I'm I've heard about it a decent amount. You know, it's it's pretty popular. Um, but I think the idea of you know like that, I guess you could call it a trope. You know, in some ways, right? That it's a pretty good one. I mean, or at least it's yeah. done well here. Um, so, um, and I'd say really well. Like, I really came away liking Weber as an author even though this is the first thing I read by him. And I mean, I also thought like if he could do, if he could like take these, like these topics in a fantasy um, and I know you mostly write uh, sci-fi. I sometimes, I feel like sometimes those topics are more explored more in sci-fi, at least more often sometimes than yeah. fantasy, or at least more directly, um, you know, yeah, sci-fi is generally different. connected to our world. Um, and fantasy is fantasy, <laughs> so, I mean, and yeah. generally not in like an earth or even like a post-apocalyptic one, you know, something that's unrecognizable essentially. And so I'm, it makes me want to read his, his sci-fi works. Um, yeah, definitely. So. And uh, the, the metric system is also is uh, interesting. Uh, I don't know if you go into spoiler uh, here. You can mention something but, if you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but basically the way the magic and the world is described in this book made me think a lot of um, what we call isekai in uh, anime, which um, basically would translate to other worlds. And that's a subgenre mm. that I like a lot. And I'm really interested in seeing how a fantasy author will uh, write that kind of magic and that, that, that kind of world thing so it's uh the, the magic system really hide me yeah it was and i really like there is a like a wizard like figure that shows up shortly he's not in the story all that much but uh um, so and i liked his appearance too but you know it's it's funny you mentioned you said isekai i'm not really like all that familiar with like anime or manga or anything like that though i mean i enjoy it from time to time <laughs> you know i don't but i don't I don't consume it a lot. Um, so that's an interesting comparison. It makes me think the word like other world makes me think of like, like Celtic myth um, often. So I don't know if there's any 
relation there, but <laughs> I mean, that's just what it makes me think of. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it's interesting, I think, actually, if you find the, there's a certain copy of Oath of Swords or a certain edition of Oath of Swords that has a novella in it as well. Um, and I'm forgetting the what what the novella is called. Um, but I did actually, just so I could read it, because I think it's only in that like edition, I went and I bought a Kindle version of Oath of Swords, of that version of Oath of Swords, so I could read this novella if I wanted to, um, which I actually started it. I, I read like the first couple pages just to see like maybe where if I could catch like where the setting was um, or what was going on essentially. And I think it has a different main character than Basel. Um, and it's, it, the wizard showed up really early on, but the thing that was weird about it is it's like, it seems to be like a portal fantasy. Um, it starts with like an American soldier in like the Middle East, like during war. And, you know, yeah. and I think he gets magically transported. So into yeah. this fantasy Th that's, world. That's, that's the thing I, I, I forgot the name, but Isekai in anime basically would translate into the genre portal fantasy. In fantasy, that's basically oh, okay. the same things. So that's why I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> you're gonna you're you're gonna need to recommend some uh, good anime or something for me because I really don't I don't watch like almost anything I haven't for uh, like ten years. So I used to a lot when I was younger. But um, so uh, but yeah, I really liked War God. I think it's it's like four or five books long. Um, four. I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe maybe that last one is like loosely related. I'm not really sure. Um, I have the first couple actually physically. I, I saw them all at the store once and at the used bookstore, and I just bought them all. Um, but uh, so, and I don't even remember. Is it like War God's Own or something like? Or I don't remember I think actually. The War God's Own is the name of the second book. Yeah, is that the second book? I, I can't remember. I think. <laughs> it shows how well prepared I am for this. Um, <laughs> so, um, it, it shows like how long it's been since we read that because that was yeah. that was November. Um, I think that was the end of November though. Um, but so that was I really enjoyed it. I I was surprised how relaxing it was. It was like the right amount of familiar, you know, with the story. I wasn't all that used to or familiar with because I mean I hadn't read the story before and so even though it has like these things we would recognize as like pretty common tropes for like classic fantasy I think it does a really good job of being an adult book first off but also one that touches on like it touches on good topics it does a really good yeah. job of actually talking about them and it's entertaining and and yeah. nice and comfortable so I mean like the same uh, I was surprised given how classic how it's a classic fantasy book uh, how sometimes there are some topics and some themes that were uh, discussed that i wasn't expecting like the, just the beginning of the book basically i wasn't expecting that at all right yeah some nice but, philosophy uh, yeah. and a lot of stuff <laughs> but i thought the beginning was awesome no there's like no better way to start that book <laughs> i mean it was really weird because of the the whole info dump in the first page i was, yes. I was just like what is happening and then there's the scene and i'm like wow yeah so that's 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 a good reminder actually you have to get over like that first page because yeah. it's just like it like it's like a brick wall almost and it's just like what the heck like but then just after that you know a couple pages in the book it, it's really gripping um and i mean there's starts, there's some goes. politics in the in the books in the book about uh, the kingdom and everything but i didn't get a single thing about it like who ruled what who i don't <laughs> i don't think it's the most important points of the, of the novel it really wasn't that important i mean in reality i mean um i don't know maybe this is slightly a spoiler but it's kind of one of those classic fantasies in the sense where it's like from point a to b to c to d to e to f you know that's it's just one long journey yeah um, which was it was a good one i enjoyed I mean, it the uh, whole I, novel is basically a chase so yeah right so um that's that's kind of part of the novel so i don't feel like that's a big spoiler but um yeah. so um and it goes back to the this first scene actually that that explains right away you know that the conflict is introduced immediately and so i mean yeah. like while there's like 
a page, I guess, of like this heavy world building exposition. I mean, it, it doesn't really last. It, 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 it all becomes important. You know, everything is important essentially afterwards. Like, like he's not wasting words, even though it is kind of, it reads rather slow again. I know I already mentioned that, but like, I was surprised like kind of how slow paced it was, which is probably the only reason I haven't wanted to go to the second book sooner um, because slow paced books don't make me feel like I'm all as accomplished as reading fast paced books. <laughs> you know, it, it's nice yeah. to get the, the stuff going in your head when you finish a book right? some finishing something feels good, but. Uh. And then it was right after, essentially right after we finished Oath of Swords that we started reading Forgotten Realm stuff, Avatar, the Avatar yeah. trilogy, I guess, as it was the original three books at least. Yeah. Um, so Avatar is a Forgotten Realm series that is was originally three books, a trilogy, but then they released two books later. Um, so it is technically called the Avatar series. Um, it, I think so. This okay, so I don't know if I told you this. Um, I don't remember when you were supposed to be reading Prince of Lies, but I had the audiobook and I was driving, so I already listened to it. Um, I haven't so, read it yet. Yeah, so I know you've only read the first three, so we'll talk about the first three. But reading the fourth one, it really just seems more like a sequel. And if you get the original copy, it says it, is. it says it's a sequel to the Avatar trilogy. And so it's almost like there's the Avatar trilogy, and these two books are just the sequels to that. So yeah. um, I think I think it fits better calling it the Avatar trilogy and then the two sequels rather than just the Avatar series. But I guess that's more of a mouthful. Um, and so um, I mean, but, just how the how Waterdeep ends, it really wraps up the story. Yeah, it really does. Um, it does, and it does a good job. You know, I don't yeah. know about you, but uh, well, I do know about you somewhat because we talked about it a little on discord but um i thought i thought with each book it got better um yeah and i thought that was a really good transition with book three since it is written by a different author and yeah just the story uh well it's, it's pretty interesting because it's it's classical DD in a sense right they give you a party and the party goes on an adventure <laughs> and in this case in this case actually the party really needs to save the world which um it's kind of up in the air whether that'll happen with D, D parties you know sometimes you're just doing some pointless thing or you know something that doesn't matter all that much or you're saving the world right that's like one or the other <laughs> but, uh, and so in this case they have to save the world but uh um it is based off the avatar crisis which is often just called the time of troubles where the gods were bad right they were they were naughty essentially and so the the over god ao um, kicked them out. So they like they couldn't live in their planes. They had to live on Faerun, it seems like specifically, and yeah. take mortal avatars. So essentially they could die. That that's the big problem with the series, right? So and you know, it was I think it was an interesting so here, let me ask you this real quick actually. So have you read any other Forgotten Realms novels? Nope. That's actually that's my that was my first uh my first dive into uh, Forgotten Errands and just D and D novels uh, as a whole. Really? Okay. So and then, man. So you've only read three. So there is almost yeah. three hundred as far as Forgotten Realms <laughs> goes. So I mean, like, obviously you don't have to read all those, but yeah. it's it's just interesting because. Um, do you think it was a good introduction? Like a good place to start. Um, I think if you. If you've played D and D and you know some of the the lore, I think it can be a good introduction, um, because there's a lot of world building. You know about the gods, especially, especially if you, if that's what you're into. Um, but most of like the general and the most important D and D um, geography, I think, uh, just is not here at all. Like we don't talk about. Uh, Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter, uh, the the big events or everything, it's, it's really centered uh, around uh, specific characters and event, events. So I think mm -hmm. if you know about the D&D lore, it can be a, a good entry. I mean, I liked it and uh, I haven't read anything else. But if you don't know anything about D&D, &D, uh, it might not be the first, the best series to start i feel like i don't know but yeah okay yeah that's 
That's probably pretty true. Um, it's just, it's hard to know because at this point I've read so many Forgotten Realms novels, you know, and like I had had the thought that maybe the Avatar series would be a good introduction. seems like based off what you say that it is, you know, if you already have some idea of the lore or, or background of the world. And that's hard to ignore because I mean, like even when I did read my first Forgotten Realms novel, which was only in 2017. So, I mean, it hasn't been super long. Um, but I already had some knowledge, right, of the Forgotten Realms um, because of video games. And, and, you know, I hadn't played Dungeons and Dragons at the time. And, but I mean, like, I knew Baldur's Gate, Waterdeep, and Neverwinter, uh, like, right, essentially. So, I mean, and, uh, and so it was nice. Like, my first Forgotten Realms novel I read um, took, most, took place mostly in Neverwinter. And so it was fine because I was familiar with Neverwinter because of the Neverwinter MMO. And so, um, in this case, actually, the the first book is mostly in the Heartlands, because it's in Cormir and the yeah. Dale Lands. And then the second book, same kind of, it's in the Dale Lands. And then they don't—I don't think they ever call it, but the place where Tantris is is called the Vast. Uh, essentially, I don't think know, they they mentioned it. Yeah, they don't ever say it. So, um, but uh, they, they basically, yeah. Yeah. So it's a city state though. I mean that that's why it's not important because the vast is not actually a political region, you know, it's just a the place where some city states are. So um and uh and then it's in the third book where you get some more recognizable stuff to people who, you know, probably have maybe the most basic Forgotten Realms knowledge. I mean we see Waterdeep, of course. I mean the novel uh, is called Waterdeep. Waterdeep. <laughs> the Yawning Portal, the Elminster yeah. and everything. Yeah. Dragon's I mean, same for, I mean. for example, Elminster. I knew who he was, but uh -huh. I don't think for someone who don't know anything about uh, Forgotten Realm, he's not really introduced. Like, we know it's... Uh, True. Uh, yeah, I, I think... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So you lagged when you started talking okay. about Elminster. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was saying, I, we, we get that he's powerful and that he's a bit eccentric, but we basically <laughs> don't know anything else. That's true, yeah. You know, he, he kind of plays that role in a lot of the older novels. He's just he's just the guide, essentially. I mean, like, I don't know if you're familiar much with, like, Dragon Magazine, but um, that's that's really how The Forgotten Realms was first introduced, was in Dragon Magazine, through Elminster, just talking about stuff. You know, and so um, before they came out with, like, a, a, any actual official material for Forgotten Realms. Um, and so he plays that role in some a lot of novels. Uh, if you want to get to know Elminster better, I'd recommend Elminster novels. But I mean, yeah, so. that's that's one of the the series I'm most looking forward to read. Yeah, so I've only read the first two um, as far as the beginning of the series goes. I read like the last two as well, which was a mistake. Um, but that was because I didn't know what I was doing when I read those. Um, but um, and so that they're good introductions. I actually really like them. Um, but uh, you haven't read those, so we won't talk about them really so much. But I think Elminster as a character is, he plays like this really odd tertiary role in really all three of the novels. <laughs> I mean, like, um, I mean, this is, okay, how do I say this? I mean, I don't feel like it's much of a spoiler saying that Elminster is not dead. Yeah. <laughs> and nor at any point does he die. I mean, like, he is like, the face of the Forgotten Realms. It's just not happening, yeah. okay? I mean, it could happen, but I mean, in I mean, how many even decades if you, it hasn't happened? Yeah. Uh, even if you haven't read the, if you don't know uh, about D&D, the way it's written, it's pretty mm -hmm. obvious that he didn't die. Right, yeah, and so, I mean, that kind of has to do with the plot that he's supposedly dead, you know, at one point, yeah. but I never believed it for a second. I mean, even though I knew, I mean, but like, even like, the part of me that was just reading the book, I was like, I mean, they make it sound like he's dead, but it just makes it sound like they're trying to make it sound like he's dead because they want you to believe he's dead <laughs> because it's obvious that he's not dead. Um, so um, he he really is just like a weird character though in this because he's just so, he's like on the side and like whenever they need him kind of like near the end of the book or whatever, he'll just show up, you know, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Um, not so much like a deus ex machina type of thing, but like, he's just like, it's like, oh, they need a slight amount of help or something. And so, oh, Elminster, obviously, who else would do it? I mean, like, um, so. 
Yeah. In some way, I don't know if you read some Discworld novels. I've read one. I read the first one. Ah, yeah. I wanted to say, in some way, he kind of reminds me of uh, Death in Discworld. Like he's powerful. Uh -huh. He's here when there's trouble, but most of the time he's doing his own thing on the side, and then he okay, just pops yeah. up at some points. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. Death doesn't make a big appearance in the first story or the first book, rather, but. Um, He's definitely a more interesting character. He's, I I haven't continued Discord Discworld rather because um, the first the first book was okay, uh, which yeah. is the common consensus consensus as far as I'm aware. And that was you know I went in there knowing that, and I read it first anyways. Um, and so um, I haven't continued, and I, part of me wants to read more, maybe you know, for like the second it's book. Good, yeah, it's books. pretty good. Yeah. So I, Discworld is one of the, it's one of my shames, I guess I could call it. Like, you know, like if, considering what I like to read, you know, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed of the fact that I haven't read any more Discworld. Uh, so, but whatever, I'll get, I'll fix that eventually, man. <laughs> so, I guess um, we'll just have to barely read the, the whole series. <laughs> yeah, and that's a big series too. That's part of the problem. <laughs> but. You know, one thing that's interesting about Elminster, though, in the Avatar series is that there is a, a companion series to the Avatar series, which I listened to. Um, I heard it was bad, okay? So, I mean, like, I, I, was, I didn't, like, ever try to, like, convince you to, to read it as well. But um, And it is kind of. Uh, it's The point of it was, like, what were the big heroes of the Forgotten Realms doing while this Avatar crisis was going on? It was basically saying... What, what were they busy doing, right? And so it's just like, and so you have a bunch of typical Forgotten Realms heroes that show up in, you know, whatever Ed Greenwood likes to write <laughs> because he's the one who made those characters. And these books are written by Ed Greenwood as well. Um, it doesn't actually fit, though. It doesn't, like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> so because there's, like, a, you find out that, so at the end of Shadowdale, there's a battle. And that battle happens in this series in the middle of book three the continuity just doesn't it just doesn't work i mean this this companion series was written like six years after the first three books and so it's just like i don't know if ed greenwood had not read the avatar trilogy like for a while or ever before writing these books because i mean because there's that big battle at the end of shatterdale and it happens in the middle of book three of the series. I'm like, that's like the beginning. I mean, like, yeah. what? What? Like, you're supposed to say what they're doing, but they're not doing anything. I mean, like, what are they doing during Tantris and Waterdeep? I mean, nothing. So, and yeah, it, it just doesn't work. There's other character like visits, and just like, wait, this character is dead, um, <laughs> like, or is dead, right? I mean, I, I could explain. I don't want to spoil some of those things too much for people who haven't read the series because. There are some interesting developments, I would say, in the Avatar series. Um, but, man, it, it is just a weird uh, yeah. series. I would not I think, recommend it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think the, 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 the trilogy is, uh, is pretty good. I think it's pretty interesting for what... Uh, basically, the reason why I started it is mainly to know how some characters that we know of uh, as D&D players, how they ended up where they are. The, I think that's the most yeah. interesting part of the of this series. Yeah, and it, you know, I think it does a good job because I mean, I didn't know anything. I mean, um, I don't. I mean, okay, so this isn't a huge spoiler. I feel like um, as far as the first trilogy goes, but if you were familiar with the Forgotten Realms um, as a setting, and have been since these books came out essentially or really probably since the middle of second edition. So maybe like the mid nineties or something. Um, Kelimvor is a deity, right? And he's a God of the dead and Kelimvor is character in this series and seeing his character development. Um, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to go into some details, but like his development by the end of the third book, you know, it's not over. I mean, like yeah. he, he's not where he's supposed to be essentially. I mean, and so, that must happen. And I will say in some cases, I can confirm that some of that stuff does happen in book four, <laughs> by the way, since I read book four. Um, but I'm interested to see where book five goes as well. So I think, 
I mean, coming as someone who knows, I, like I played Neverwinter as an MMO. If you ever played that, there's a section in that game where you go to the Never Death Graveyard in at Neverwinter, and there's a bunch of priests of Kelimbor around there, right? And so it's nice to see a human Kelimbor, right? Because we think of like deities, even in a setting like any D- Dungeon Dragons setting, you know, where they're rather they're kind of Greek, you know what I mean? They're rather fallible. They're not perfect beings or anything yeah. like that. Um, but they're, I mean, they're in this case, we get to see his humanity, right? I mean, like his his faults. I mean, his. I mean, he, he does progress really well as a character, actually. Um, I think especially in book two, um, <clears throat> he just has like some better developments, um, especially with his, his interactions with like Cyric and then with Bane. <laughs> but uh man, oh and speaking of bane man miracle and bahal are way better antagonists yeah. and Cyric for that matter um than uh, bane. basically uh Baal for me felt like the villain who was there to just hurt the party miracle yeah. felt like the the planning villain like the plotting villain mm-hmm. Cyric felt like the real villain and then uh-huh. there was bane who was just a clown like the, <laughs> the angry one who just wants to get what he wants <laughs> and just i mean the way he dies he just doesn't want to lose so he i mean it's pretty bane really felt like a stupid god yeah like those he deserved are, those... to to lose <laughs> those are not some because, great because, comparisons yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he so deserved bane. to lose not because he was bad but because he was stupid he is he really is the, the like i would say no, ar- archetypal like stupid villain and it was yeah. annoying like having him as the bad guy i mean like and that was what made probably Shatterdale one of the worst one, in my opinion, because in second in the second book, Cyric starts coming into his role, right? And so that like that character development, that arc, is really interesting. And then Bane's, <laughs> I mean, I like Bane's development too because he's out of the picture by the end of the book. But I mean, <laughs> so but and it's just like, man, it's just it's just I don't know. It's all, all the so. things where Bane is just. Um, insulting like Merkel, like I'm better than you, and Merkel is just like, yeah, whatever. I just <laughs> understood what Merkel felt. Like, yeah, I mean, just you... he is an idiot. I mean, Bane is just yeah. an idiot, and it's just it's just funny that hit this god is just a moron. I mean, like, his <laughs> Merkel is a lot more effective in everything he does. I mean, like, he doesn't, he's never in the limelight until the end of the third book. You know, he's always pulling strings um from the behind right and so and and it works i mean i don't i mean it worked better than bane at least i mean bane was more out there right his idea was conquest like i have to rule all of the moon sea area for whatever reason Uh, and so it's just like it's just it was really silly um and so but i really liked i liked the ending where we have um ao was an interesting character I thought, and I don't know if you know this, but he actually wasn't originally part of the Forgotten Realms. I think they made him for this trilogy, and now he's set in the lore, right? But um, he the, originally, I don't think there was any, like, over-god. Like, there was no boss deity. <clears throat> I, I didn't know. Yeah, so, and then, I don't know if, I think it was the, the epilogue? of Waterdeep where it implies that even Ao has like a boss. Yeah. Um it's it's just implied. Yeah. It's not really even it's like very subtle. Um but I, I mean, thought that was interesting. Well, it's not even yeah, it's it's not even implied. Like it's clearly it's clearly said, but it just stopped there. We don't get yeah, to, right, to see true. more. Yeah, and I was like, that's interesting. It's like how could I play with that? You know, and um you know there's more in dealt with the cosmology in book four, which I know you haven't read. But, I mean, you get to see some, like, Elder Evils in Book 4. Um, and more... De- the Book 4 deals almost exclusively with deities. Um, and, I mean, and if you know the ending of Book 3, then they're, you know, they're back. And Time of Troubles yeah. is over, right? So, I mean, like... And so, it's it's really interesting. I would say 4 is even better than 3. Um, James Lauder, who writes Book 4, is just a good author. So, um, I don't know when you're planning on reading that, but... Uh, uh, so. I might re- read them soon. I just I'm trying to wrap up some series. So since yeah. it's the end of this trilogy, I just post uh, post the this series. But I think uh, 
uh, as soon as I finish some series, I will go back to it. Because yeah, the novels are pretty short, so it's uh, they are read pretty fast. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to do the same though. I was just viewing it more as the five books, uh, which is why I went ahead and read four. Um, yeah. And I'm hoping to read five here relatively soonish. Um, so, and then we'll definitely have to read more though. I mean, like I I would like actually I um when we do read something, I would like to talk more. I mean, like if we uh, maybe did like a spoiler discussion on the book shortly after reading the book. So we're not so forgetful. Um, yeah. and, then, um, and then, you know, it, you should, uh, you should assign me some, I mean, I, not with anything, but we, we should talk about some like anime or manga or something. And then maybe yeah. we can have a discussion on stuff like that too. Cause that's yeah, something I'm be, really fun, out of the loop on. So um, I really watch like almost nothing i only like rewatch anime at this at this stage yeah, for yeah, the most I, watch, part. Uh, I watch a lot of anime yeah i've seen some the, the new one yeah. on your channel so um i got i got the idea that you liked it so i mean like <laughs> yeah yeah the idea of my oh. of my channel was basically books and animes okay Since, yeah. yeah so and then you read a you read like let's see you read fantasy and sci-fi i mean i saw you had one review for a space opera that's yeah. only in french sadly well, yes uh, version, but <laughs> i mostly mostly read uh, fantasy but mm -hmm. sometimes yes I, I think it's like 60 percent fantasy 30 percent mm -hmm. sci-fi and then 10 percent of uh, everything else yeah you you've read some like kind of like classic stuff too though as yeah. far as it seems is that mostly from like your schooling or is that like personal taste uh, as well? Like, I don't know why. Uh, when I looked into uh, the sci-fi books I've read, uh, I also noticed that I've mostly read old things. Like, um, oh yeah, I, like, I've read Dune recently, the Foundation trilogy, oh, okay. Planet of the Apes. I just finished uh, oh. finished uh, Roadside Picnic. So yeah, okay, mostly yeah, so you're classics. Reading, yeah, that's those are classics. And you've read Foundation too, haven't you? Yeah. And then, did you read Ubik on the, the Discord? Yep, I, I read it, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you're you're like... I, I saw you reviewed one modern, it was like, oh, I don't even remember uh, what it's called. Something I, Mundi. Dominium, Dominium Mundi? Mundi, yes. That's yeah, the, so. the, French, uh, the yeah. French space opera. And yeah, it's it feels like a classic because it's a reinterpretation of the first uh, crusade. Yeah, but uh, that was one... That's one I want to read, but my French is not that good and it doesn't have an English translation. It looks like it has a Russian one, which I thought was interesting, but um, not an English one. So maybe if there's an English translation or if my French improves drastically, I can read that. But uh, yeah. so. I've also read uh, Mitchell uh, 2033, who can be described oh, yeah. as sci-fi, I mean, post-apocalyptic, but uh, okay, yeah. I didn't, didn't like it. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think I watched that video of yours, but I saw it. Um, yeah, so I don't, I, I'm in a sci-fi mood right now. Um, so, uh, I'm actually, I don't, I mentioned it in my TBR video that came out yesterday, actually. Um, but, uh, I'm going to probably be buddy reading for my channel. So I don't know if anyone will join me, but I'll be reading at least, um, House of Sons by Alistair Reynolds oh. in April. Um, which isn't super old. I mean, it's not a classic in that yeah, sense, but it's a standalone. So, yeah. so and that was. I mean, it's what, not a classic, but I think in in the sci-fi uh, genre, it's one of the most popular. Yeah, I was. Um, a Jonathan from Words and Time mentioned it was probably his favorite novel. Like just you know. Yeah. Uh, Alistair Reynolds is an author I've uh, been planning to read. Uh, yeah, he's he's one I haven't tried yet, and so he's one I feel like I should. Um, same with uh, who I actually just started this last night was uh, Adrian Tchaikovsky, his Elder Race. Um, so it's really short, so I was like, I'm just going to read this so I can get a taste for Tchaikovsky, and it sounds cool. I mean, the book yeah. sounds good, too. So uh, I've already read um, Dogs of War by uh, Tchaikovsky with, uh, with Sylvan. Oh, okay, um, yeah. And it's pretty great. I really loved it. So Tchaikovsky is really an author that uh, I want to read more of. Yeah, that he's he's definitely uh, quite prolific. He seems like so, um, and relatively popular along with that. Yeah. you know, prolific. Writes so, a lot and uh, lots of great novels, apparently. Yeah. So, which is you know, it, you know, some people make a big deal out of um, 
like Brandon Sanderson or Adrian Tchaikovsky writing a lot. And I was like, that's it. I mean, if you go back to like classics, a lot of those people wrote a lot. Like Asimov has published like what, 400 novels or something like that. I mean, that's, that's a ton. That's way more than Sanderson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, so like, and and so I guess, like, uh, yeah. I guess in the, nowadays, like what I say might be wrong, but with the, the rise of uh, indie publishing, I mm -hmm. guess it's easier to, live uh, from being an author than like before what where uh, being published was difficult and there were less people reading so yeah. i guess now it's easier to live from being an author so they have more there's more there are more people who have more time to write i guess yeah which is nice it was also bad right you know because um <laughs> i can't read all that i'm gonna die before i read everything i want to yeah um but <laughs> so um, but yeah, there's actually a lot of indie authors out there too who also write an insane amount. Um, yeah. And so, but, who's the um, the one uh, with the the Cradle series that I've heard a lot who publishes oh, like uh, two or will three White, novels? Uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, Will White. He publishes yeah. like two or three novels a uh, a year. Yeah. So I mean, it's not it's not so. Far, I mean, it's super far fetched if I were to write anything. I mean, I I could hardly do a short story a year. But I mean, like, it's, uh, but I mean, for some of these people, it's, it's really on, honestly, um, seems, it's more typical than I think some people give it credit for to write that much. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'm looking forward to reading House of Sons. Um, so if you want to join me in April with that, um, and then, uh, but yeah, so I'm also just reading a bunch of other stuff right now. I'm re I'm listening to the, Kalea, Kalea Drop, which is book seven in the Spiral Wars. I started Elder Race, like I mentioned. Um, and then, well, and Elder Race is actually apparently inspired heavily by a Gene Wolfe story. So it's dedicated to Gene Wolfe at the beginning, which I thought was cool because I just finished the sort of lictor by Gene Wolfe yesterday. Um, and then I am also reading Gathered Darkness by Fritz Leiber. Um, so that's what I'm currently reading. Um, I don't know if you're are you reading anything right now or are you too busy with like school and stuff? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm reading some things. Uh, I'm on the last book of uh, Raira Revelations. That's oh, okay. pretty hard to say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I think this series is really great. Like it just jumped uh, maybe top one, top two of my favorite uh, series. Oh, really? And okay. then uh, I'm planning on um, uh, once I finish some series, I start um, New Romancer. Uh, I forgot the name of the whole series. Oh, uh, by uh, I think William it's Gibson? The, yeah, I think it's the Sprout trilogy. I don't uh, honestly know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I think I've told you maybe, uh, but I think my uh, next uh, Dive oh, yeah. into Forgotten Realms will be uh, the Dark Elf trilogy. That's a nice omnibus you got there. How hard was that to find there? It was actually pretty easy. I just okay. found it like thirteen euros. Uh, so okay, yeah. oh, that's not even pretty that's cheap, pretty and it's in cheap, uh, yeah. Yeah, rather quite good quality, especially okay. when uh, I've uh, from the same uh, website I've received a copy of uh, the Great Hunt uh, by uh, Robert oh. Jordan, who was just terrible. Oh. Like wait, the the condition was terrible, or like the book itself yeah. was terrible. <laughs> I can show you uh, the book. I've uh, yeah, I have sure. it, like, basically received this. Thing. Oh man! Wow! Yeah, That's and not I, even I like had an to copy. Yeah, I had to put some things over it uh, because wow. the 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 cover was just ripping ripping off. That's what we call book abuse, right there. Whoever had that before. <laughs> um, man, jeez. So yeah, so you've read the Eye of the World, then, huh? Yeah, I uh, okay. yeah, but you read it with uh, with Sylvan and uh, OEE uh, on the okay, on, yeah, um, that's right. This is this called, yeah. I was planning right, on yeah. reading the Great Hunt and the next books for before watching the series, uh, the TV show, but then uh, mm -hmm. the TV show was terrible, and I just dropped off. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel yeah, I agree. The TV show was pretty bad, but the Great yeah. Hunt's actually one of my favorites in the series. Um, so, uh, but I mean, I don't know if you'll like it so much, but um, I I actually really like the their Rayuria revelations as well. Though I read those several years ago at this point. Um, I think I think it's Heir of Novron. Is that the third one? Um, uh, the third. 
Yeah, the third uh, so, omnibus. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, that one's my favorite. And then I actually just got a copy of Neuromancer. So if you let me know when you're going to start that, then we might maybe I'll yeah. join you or whatever. So um, I didn't actually realize it was part of a series, but that's not super surprising. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Neuromancer so. is actually talked about a lot, but the the following books like they're uh -huh. barely mentioned. I don't know if it's because maybe they're less good. I don't know. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's that, or I mean, like I would imagine Neuromancer is a rather seminal work. I mean, like we can give a lot mm -hmm. of credit to Cyberpunk, I believe, from Neuromancer. Yeah, I mean, um, he's the and, one credited as uh, the creator of a Cyberpunk, mostly. So yeah. Yeah. So it's one I've been wanting to read for a while, but I just got a copy, like honestly, just a couple days ago. So I mean, like, um, so I'm looking forward to reading that one too, but. Uh, yeah, so um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about right now or mention, but I mean, I don't want to take I up too much know. of your time. <laughs> I think we, we, we talked about uh, everything. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I mean, just to, I will link your channel below so you guys can go check out, it's, <coughs> excuse me, go check out Tasky. Again, it's a lady, Revelry, the Tasky. Um, I think I probably said that okay, uh, and, um, but uh, yeah, that that's a complicated word uh, to pronounce for an uh, English speaker. Yeah, those R's. I, I that <laughs> and, um, and then I have to remember that the um, the D E is D and not D. Um, but then, um, anyways, so uh, but uh, so go check him out. Um, definitely undersubbed. And I mean, if you come out with those English videos, that would. Uh, Love to watch those. So, um, I mean, again, my French is not that not that great, but I do watch your videos in French too when you have those. So, I mean, um, but uh, thanks for joining me. It was fun talking. Honestly, I don't yeah, get to do this fun. enough. So, um, and even with the internet problems, it could have yeah. been worse. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks thanks for stopping by. So, and then I guess hopefully we will chat another time about yeah. similar things or something else. So. Anyways, catch the people on watching this later. <laughs>